Well, it is gonna be challenging. You know why? Because you know what, this job right here, you could have 20 adjusters go out there and write an estimate on that, and they're all gonna be so far apart. They're gonna be so, so, so different. Same with contractors. You can, you can call out 20 contractors with bid on that, and the bids are gonna be just all over the place. So I wish there was an easy way to shortcut it, but some things just aren't shortcut, you know, in this business. I don't know, man, I'm real, I'm real put it in, put in the work. You don't get to leave without shaking my hand, man. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Great you, job. man. Thanks for coming. Thank I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. Right. Have a good one, brother. You too, man. Thank you very much, Thank you, guys. Sir. Thank you for spending your Friday Thank with me. Thank, Thank you, brother. You. I hope you got good you. stuff. We'll Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys coming. I love your energy. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Got to go quick because they're coming fast. I'm not letting anybody go. All right. Thank you. This is one of those ones where I told you about Symbility. This is the Symbility. Symbility comes into this. That's another, for those of you who don't know, it's another um, estimating software that's not Xactimate and it sucks. <laughs> I would say like there's no other better way to put it, you know. Um, you can just tell that the items in it are much lower. Usually, I don't think it updates as much as, soft, as uh, Xactimate does. It's just not as accurate. I think there's a lot more market research that goes into Xactimate. Um, and that's what I rely on too, by the way. When, they, when, when uh, my buddy over here, uh, you were talking about earlier, you know, when they, you, you got, and he got an email during the break back from oh, yeah. Liberty Mutual, right? Uh, about the, you know, they wanted to use the core logic and you're like, uh, you know, I would say, you know, Xactimate's the most accurate mar you know, way to come up with the market value and that's what we use we don't use any of that i don't we don't that's not our pricing we use exactimate you know um, but anyway this is a this is another deal that uh was from that same hurricane okay that we that we showed earlier and it's tower hill is the insurance company and this is what simbility looks like so it kind of i mean if you look at it, if you're not used to look oh i'm can't you see it guys all right so that's what simbility looks like <clears throat> getting brighter here. One way to tell is it has colors in it. Xactimate is just black and white. You know, it is different. So like if you're not used to seeing Xactimate estimates, but you have seen plenty, you might think like, I know I did when I first started, I was like, oh, it's just the same stuff. And then I realized it's different. They have different terminology, you know, different, the items are worded different, right? But it's, it's definitely an inferior product, okay? So now got involved with this one, also the same hurricane. <laughs> Tower Hill had already been out there, an adjuster had been out there. This is a big, huge house out on Panama City Beach, like big house, lots and lots of windows that you're going to see. I mean, and it just tons of damage. Like, I mean, I don't even know how many rooms this thing had. Three floors, tons of rooms. It's one of those deals where just you just keep going, you're doing your notes, and it's just like one room <laughs> runs into the next, and you're taking your photos, and you don't quite, you have to really be careful because one, you know, you don't really know where you're, you can lose track of where you're at on your stuff, right? So that's, this was one of those houses. The estimate that the insurance adjuster wrote was just atrocious. I mean, it was so bad. Like, well, they're, they're calling like areas where there's a, a wooden ceiling, like hardwood ceiling, and he's got drywall. You know, there's a whole area where there's like a, a bar area with granite countertops and ice maker and all this stuff and cabinetry that he just missed. It's not like it's not there. Everything had to be gutted though, so he just totally missed a lot of things. Um, I was able to go there and do the inspection before it got demoed out. Um, the contents people were there packing up boxes. You'll see in some of the pictures. And then I was able to come back um, after, after the, the demo had been done and get more pictures. And then by the way, I want to say too, just as the in addition to that A bucket, B bucket, C bucket. So you know, I told you, like, we prove it during the build. Uh, one of the things I did not specifically bring up is that when you, when you go build it now, 
and you are collecting all the evidence and new photos and all that, now once you've built it, just take that original Xactimate estimate and modify it now to match exactly what was done at the job, okay? So like any of those items you agreed to remove before in the A bucket, don't put them back on there, right? But don't, don't take off anything that they were resisting before. Put them right back in and put in the documentation, the new photos, the new proof that'll show why that is. So you're doing an amended exact, like a, a modified, revised, right? Uh, copy of your Xactimate estimate. But I don't, I don't view that as being an estimate anymore, guys. I view that as then becoming an invoice, okay? Because it's not an estimate anymore. It's not a hypothetical anymore. Now we've built, we've gone through the process. We were on the record beforehand with them. We've gotten down to the end of it. We've proved what it actually is gonna, it took. We tried, to, we tried to do it their way, because that's our job. We tried to do it their, their way. We couldn't, and here's the proof. And here's the amended Xactimate report, and it's no longer an estimate. It's an invoice. Pay the invoice. Like my whole language and tone starts to change a little bit at, at that point, right? That's when we go, like if we can't get anything done, then we're doing supervisors. We're doing, we're doing lots of different things at that point. Like, and in fact, in fact, the, the nuclear option is like, well, I don't ever want to use, and I want to make sure that the client's on board with me first before I do it. Like, they know I'm going to do it, which is, you know, I don't have any other choice. I've tried to be reasonable with you all the way through the process. I've been on the record with you. Uh, I tried to give you the opportunity to inspect and approve and deny. I tried to do it your way. Uh, I told you it wasn't going to be possible. Uh, it wasn't possible, and I have all the proof, okay? We did, we did it your way. And so here are the items, here's the invoice, pay the invoice, and if you don't pay the invoice, then I'm afraid I'm gonna have no choice but to collect it from my client, and I don't think they have the ability to cover this right now. So essentially, I'm going to have to file a lien against my own client's property, and that's what I'm gonna do. Click, you know what I mean? And just leave it at that. Let them go cover themselves with their, with their supervisor. Well, he's doing what? What's he doing? Yeah, I, I told him he's out of his mind. You know, I told him, yeah, he's not getting it. And he said he's going to file a lien. Well, why is he filing? You know, well, just give him the overhead and profit, you know, like things like that. So it works uh, more times than not, believe it or not. But it's, it's just definitely going to blow things up a little bit. You know, I'm like, and that, that might be okay. Maybe I copy five or six people on that one. <laughs> you know, like, unfortunately, you know, I'm going to have to file a lien. Um, the other thing, too, is you can, you can red tag your own job site with the building department. Like you can violate yourself with the building department. Like think about it. They don't, they don't think that you have to comply with codes. They don't want you to do items that are required by code. Uh, inform the building department on yourself. Like shut it down, you know what I mean? Let's red tag this thing. I mean, there's some real drastic things that you can actually do. There is, you know, like, like how crazy are you willing to get and how cool is your client? Cause you need to keep, you need to keep them, you know, on board. Uh, but. But these are things that are not, you know, like I wouldn't recommend utilizing frequently, but, but I'm saying, you know, how bad do you want it? You know, you're like, man, I can't let them off the hook on this one. Well, okay, let's go. Like they won't respond back to you, right? Can't get a hold of the insurance company. But you're on the record, on the record, on the record, emails, documentation. Anytime you have a verbal uh, discussion with an adjuster, immediately email them and memorialize the conversation hey, just wanted to recap what we just talked about on the phone. And that way, if they disagree, then they should be correcting you right then and there with the email, right? So that the memorialization is actually really good. Um, they won't respond, respond to you or they stop responding to you, right? Um, then how bad do you want to get a hold of them? I've tried everything. I've tried everything. I doubt it. I doubt you've tried everything. So like, look at the state records with the corporation records and things like Department of Insurance. There should be registered agents and corporate managers, right? Like, like officers of the board of the, of the corporation for that insurance company. It should have all their contact information, like registered agents have to be served at a particular address. So I would just send them a certified letter, you know, with a nice little letter to send everybody on that whole list a certified letter that breaks down, hey, this is claim number such and such. I've sent an email this date, this date, this date to this adjuster, to this, you know what I mean? And something's going to happen with that because it's too much on the record. What do you think, Mr. Attorney? I love it. You love it? Do you think that's going to happen? They're going to do something. Like there's this, and nothing I said was, hey, you better pay or else, or I represent my client. You know what I mean? Like I don't go there. I just, I'm just, 
Let's just do what a contractor does. Let's just do what a contractor does. Let's be a contractor. I don't feel like we need to go and do, be a public adjuster. I think we have more power by sticking with building codes, inspection data, you know, the photos of what actually happens when we do the job, right? All right, so that was a sidetrack, side route, back to this estimate. All right, I'm going to go through it real kind of briefly because even their version's really, really uh, long, right? But we have the rear elevation. Uh, there's columns that need, you know, windows. Some, they had some windows on here. They didn't have a lot, though, on the windows. Um, some siding. Uh, again, the roof on this one was also done by somebody else. I'm just going to kind of go through it quickly. Temporary repair, dumpster. Uh, I just want to see some of the interior stuff here. Yeah, they, they were using the wrong kind of wood flooring all the way throughout. It was much more premium grade than what they had. Um, I'm going to fly through it, guys, because we have a lot more to cover. It's all the same stuff. It just runs, you know, one room after another room after another room. Just and none of it was, hey, remove wet drywall bag for disposal. You know, none of it was that, even though that's what had to be done. Um, but that they had a, a different mitigation company that came in and built them directly, so I didn't really think it was an issue. There's a different contents company, so there's no mitigation or contents anywhere in this estimate. It's just build back with no, with no roof. Okay, um, let me fly it down to the bottom line here. Okay, I want to get to the bottom line. They came up with so the big number, right? 182,556. Sounds like a big job, right? Um, but <laughs> we had to spend like 160,000 just on materials for the windows and doors. Just on materials. All the windows and doors in the whole house had to be removed and replaced. In Florida, there's a, at the time it was only 25%. The 25% law, if anything's more than 25% damage, you gotta do them all. All the windows and doors, right? Now it's 50% or 51, something like that. They've, they've, they've raised that up. But this would have approved for that too. Um, and then, you know, you have the depreciation that they hold back of 19 grand. Uh, another one down here, 2,000. I don't even know what the deductible was, but that obviously had to come out too. It was significant. Florida property value is, I mean, it was, it was, I don't remember what it was, but I remember it was high. So, I mean, the 161,000 that we end up with I mean, that's what we need just in material expenses, just to buy windows and doors. Much less gut the house, you know, rebuild all the <laughs> flooring and drywall and everything in the whole house, the, the roof and everything. It was nowhere near what was necessary, right? And so on this one, the strategy was, again, to send them a photo report. And this time it worked. That's what triggered the, uh, the, the, the second inspection, okay? I'll just jump to the photo part <laughs> instead of having to go back and find it. And then I'll go back up and show you the estimate. Uh, there's that ceiling that was supposed to be drywall. Okay, so this is what the house looks like. And it's out on the water. So there's the water. The dock was ripped apart. That was on a different, see it out there? That was a different, uh, yeah, I went out and flew my drone for them because that was a different insurance policy, like a different company. Uh, but I went out and got him the footage that he needed for that. His dock was all ripped up. Um, this guy was a retired attorney, the, the client that lived at the, at the house, but really nice house, high-end finishes and just uh, like high-end trim and uh, like wallpaper and, you know, just different finishings. This is, this is not a standard grade project, right? And you can kind of see the ceiling there. Uh, hopefully you can see it. I mean, it was just drenched all the way through this house, man. It was terrible. And then it was, the power was out and it was humid and... It was just sweating. Lots of uh, windows. Oh, there's the content company that came in. And you see those water spots. I don't know how good you guys can see them come up, but all right, we'll kind of go through this a little quicker. I think you get the idea, right? There's three floors. Very, very nice house. Just one thing runs to the next, right? Um, let me go up to the estimate, though. So the adjuster comes out, the second adjuster, he comes out, and he says, well, you know, what's wrong with this estimate? I'm like, well, it's missing all kinds of things. It's just really all over the place. We have different things that are, that are mislabeled as what type of item they are. Um, but we just need to go through and take a fresh look. 
And he goes, do you have your estimate? And I go, well, I have sort of the structure of one initially, you know, in place. Um, but I see you guys, I, we use exact math. So you guys use some stability, right? And you know what this guy said to me? He said, can you send me the ESX file? <laughs> That's what he said, because he did not want to go do an estimate for those three floors and all that, you know what I mean? So he, he said, well, I'll have to get my manager's approval, but if you could send me the ESX file, we could probably do this with Xactimate. So Tower Hill wrote an estimate in Xactimate, even though they used Symbility. Like, they didn't have to rely on mine. He wrote it himself. So he wanted, so listen, if an adjuster uses Symbility, they know how to use Xactimate. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. They probably have it. You know, they probably have an active subscription. Um, and if they don't do that, I would just insist you got to use the you got to use the Xactimate, okay? All right. So exterior, I'm gonna I want to show you a couple new things with this, like a new t a couple new tactics with this through this project that hopefully w I I know it'll help. I know it'll help. That's why I want to get there. All right. So exterior clean and um, pressure clean, right? Okay. Rear porch. So we had these columns that were back there. I didn't really get to show it too much in the photos, but they were just like unattached from the roof, just sort of dangling. Um, there's a lot of masonry and brick work that was damaged all over the house. Um, all right, remove, 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 remove. So the rear, this is just dealing with the rear porch kind of deal. Okay, this is what I want to show you. Remember the windows and doors problem, guys. That's going to be the biggest problem on this job. It is. Like, the, it's going to be hundred, like a couple hundred thousand dollars just for the windows and doors. And I first have to get them convinced that all the windows and doors have to be replaced. <laughs> You see, it's, not, it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, what's going to happen, and they have ALE, you know, somebody mentioned ALE, their additional living expenses, they're living somewhere else. They can't live in this home. So the longer they're there, the more money it's going to cost the insurance company, more stress, right? They want to get back in their property. But if we have this fight over windows and doors, then the money that they're willing to pay right now on all the other stuff is basically, you know, that's going to be restricted. We're going to, we're going to come to this stalemate and nothing's going to get done. So what I would like to do, because I know this is coming, this fight over the windows and doors, is I want to take that and separate it out of it and push it down the road. Let's get everything else first, okay? Let's take the windows and doors and separate it from this thing. Let's get it acknowledged. Let's get some approval for it. But we're, as far as amounts and all, we'll talk about that later. How's that? You know, let's get what we know now, what we can agree on now. Let's push the windows and doors down later. All right, so this is what I did. So you've heard of the bid item. We talked about bid item. This is not a bid item. This is an open item. And where you may have seen it before is from the insurance adjusters. If there's an item for permit, for example, then they'll put on their, well, permit, taxes, fees, and permit, right? Or insurance, taxes, and fees, something like that. Zero, because we don't know how much the permit's gonna be. But we are acknowledging that the permit's required. We just don't know how much it is. That's called an open item. Not a bid item, but an open item. So we're introducing it, and the adjuster is introducing it, saying, I acknowledge that this is the case, but I just don't know how much money to put on it yet. Okay? But I want to bring it up that we know that this exists. So I learned that from adjusters. And now I use open items as the contractor, and it works like a charm. Okay? Now watch. So this is just the rear elevation. And there's 37 windows and seven doors on the rear elevation alone, right? So, all right, windows, aluminum, open item. Amount, zero. 37 windows and seven doors are damaged or require replacement due to the FBC 25% building code and must be replaced. Prices to follow, building code requirements are attached to the beginning of the images section. Quick note, FBC. Florida Building Code, it's just like IBC. <laughs> and I, they have FRC for residential, just like IRC, you know. And Florida codes have their own. I have my own thing in your, in your files about Florida. You've got Florida codes in there if anybody is working down there. Um, it's the only state that is a little bit different than all the rest, but essentially it's still the fact that they adopt the same code. Like they adopt the IRC, the IBC, the IECC, it's just that they have a lot more amendments, a lot more uh, additions that they've, they've enhanced it quite a bit. Um, so if you see that FBC, that's what that is. So, but anyway, 37 windows, seven doors are damaged. Amount, zero. It's an open item. Prices to follow.
We don't know the prices yet. And we didn't either because we were, we were going, they had Pella and we were going with Anderson, which is actually even a little bit less, um, Windows. And we were waiting for them to get us all the specs and all that, all the prices, their, their bid, right? So that, that was a true statement. Prices are fall, right? Um, all right. Dormer, siding, a bunch of other stuff, right? Pool deck. It could be anything. This is not really what I'm trying to show you. It's more of this open item thing, right? Uh, masonry, masonry, open item. The brick veneer exterior walls are heavily damaged by hurricane debris hits and will need repaired. We are awaiting a masonry contractor to evaluate further. Prices to follow, open item, zero. See how that can be used for anything? If you see a fight coming, you don't want to have it now, but you want to get money for all the items that you know you can agree on, put, that's how you push it down the road. Open item, right? All right, so masonry, all right. Left elevation, 10 windows and three doors are damaged. Prices to follow, masonry. Zero. HVAC, huh? What's the number that you plug in there after you get Zero. No, I mean, after you get the bid price, do you then tack on a profit? That's a good question. So what I did actually on that, that's a good question. He's asking, what numbers did you use when you got the window prices, you know? So I used Xactimate line items, but I went in and I changed the labor. So you can change the labor in Xactimate. I mean, not the labor, not the labor, the materials. It's going to set, like if it has a single hung window or whatever, vinyl, then you can go in there. But if you're paying a different amount, like you can see what Xactimate shows that you should have to pay for that item in materials. And if you look at that item and you look at what you're paying and it's like, and this is, goes for any item in Xactimate, right? If you find that, I mean, if you're willing to put in the work and the research and look and see what Xactimate is actually saying that you're going to pay in materials, if that number's wrong, and if the item that you have to go buy is much more than Xactimate assesses for, you can go in there and change that number and put a footnote in describing why, along with documentation that proves it. Like that proves the actual, like I would prove it with the Pelt, with the Anderson, uh, whatchamacallit, or with the, the, the specs. And that's what I did. So, but I, I, now I have another, more, I had more options with this too, is that the labor, I could, I could choose to use Xactimate's labor or manipulate it, right? And use my own labor. Because what is it saying the labor's for? For the window and all these components. And but Anderson had more components. Technically, I could have raised up the labor. You see what I mean? In this case, I didn't. I checked with my client. And I said, what do you think about this number? And I gave him the price that I came up with. He was like, oh, that's the, they're never going to approve that. And they did. You know? But anyway, so he was more than happy with the price. where we. But I, I really could have kept going with that. You know, there's more ways that you can elaborate. Um, all right, front elevation, 17 windows and one door are damaged and require replacement. Masonry, same thing. Right elevation, masonry, and then the windows and doors on the right elevation. There are four windows uh, are damaged. And then, okay, so then fencing. And then we have this chimney repair, 50 hours. Uh, and then just, just a ton of rooms, guys. Just like, <laughs> this one is 438 pages with two images per page, you know, so. This, is, this, this took me like two weeks to write this estimate. It did. And so you think about the trouble that I saved the adjuster if he's going to use my ESX file, right? Um, it took me a very, very, very long time to do this estimate. This is one of my biggest estimates that I've written. I've, I mean, aside from commercial jobs at hotels and things where you got to go. But that's even easier because all the rooms are the same size. You know, this is a different room and, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, but I want to show you my bottom line after... Huh? No, because, it, well, there was some demo, quite a bit of it, but, so yes, we did do, like, like the outside, a lot of the exterior stuff, the brick, the, the windows. Um, there was quite a bit of demo still to be done, but remember, there's a mitigation company that did a lot of it, too. But there was, yes, to answer your question, there was quite a bit that I had to go through and individually change all the way through that. You know, anything you can see here that's still there as far as removal, that was changed. That was definitely to plumbing, a uh, lot cabinetry, lots of different things where those all work the same way. They're, they're D, DMO as the default starting point. So you can change it and it's more money, right? So watch what happened with that. So like um, my bottom line is 438, 539, right? So that's my price without the windows and doors, guys, without it. And they're at 182. You see what I'm saying? So, all right, now let's go look at what he came up with after I gave him my ESX file. And he's like, okay, give me some time. 
And this guy was not cool like the other guy was. That guy was cool on the other one. He even said, I mean, you saw how much extra money he spent. He's like, man, you're a real pleasure to work with. I'm thinking, man, I, I like that. You're getting him to pay all his extra money, and you were the pleasure to work with, you know? That's how it should be, by the way. But this, this I mean, because you make their job easy. If you don't need to fight with them, you know? You know what they need. They just need CYA. They need to cover themselves. They need documentation. Help them get it. Don't ask them to do things that's going to get it kicked back down and, and you know, have problems for them. I have to, uh, another sidetrack. There's another estimate or another uh, video on my YouTube channel. Two of them, actually. Uh, maybe five years ago, there was this uh, adjuster, a short uh, guy that was, he worked for Amica, and uh, Asian guy. He's an awesome dude, and he, he hooked me up on this Amica claim. You know, he, I, I worked it through with him, showed him the documentation, and he approved all this extra stuff, this wall. Like, we had scaffolding, and we had to rebuild stucco in the roof. I mean, this is a really cool adjuster. And I was following him around during the inspection. I had my Canon camera, and I was filming him. And he thought I was just taking pictures, you know? And I, so I made a YouTube video out of it and put it on there. And I kind of blurred out his face, you know, but you could, if he ever saw it, he would know that what I did, you know, it was a state where you can kind of do that, but it probably wasn't right for me to do. <laughs> you know, I put him on YouTube. Anyway, so I see him later, a year later on a commercial claim and he's working for Nations of Lloyds and I'm working for a different, you know, client also, like totally different thing. I said, hey man, you remember that deal? You know, we, 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 you know he remember. it was easy for me because I've seen him on the video, you know, he probably didn't know. But uh, he'd never seen the video, though. He'd never seen it. So what did I do? I filmed him again. <laughs> I filmed it. You can see this yourself. It's, uh, the first one's called Trained Eyes. It's kind of like a little music compilation sort of thing. But that same guy shows up in another one. I think it's something commercial roof. But it's, it's like a small, flat roof, commercial roof. It's not that big. And I know it's not that big because he's using his tape measure to measure it. You know, it's just a square, real easy for him to do. It had walls, so there was hail damage, hail damage on the walls. It was pretty simple, but it was an older roof. There's probably going to be a lot of layers of other things that we would find later, right? Um, but for now, all he can see is the modified bitumen on the top, and he's writing it up to replace that mod bit. And I know that the codes we're gonna, are going to require that we add ISO board to that. That's somewhat familiar to him, too. So he says, can you send me over the city stuff? I said, yeah, I'll send you all the stuff. He said, okay, I'll get you that. And I said, and also, man, that you know, parapet wall flashing is required, and, you know, and the cap flashing is required. And I started telling him about all these other things, and he goes, oh man, no, no. You know, Nations Lloyd's not like Amica, man. They're not like Amica. You know, I could get you the, the mod bit and the, the, the uh, ISO board, but not all that other stuff. And he, he doesn't even know what he's, you know, he doesn't, that's all code related too, you know. But he's, he already sees resistance coming from his higher ups, you know. And so I'm like, Okay, okay, I'll tell you what. Well, who does the supplements on your, on, at, at Nation Lloyd? He goes, oh, that's all done at the in, on the inside. I go, okay, I'll tell you what. Give me the mod bit. Give me the ISO boards, right? Um, you can leave out the cap flashing, the parapet wall. Give me this and this over here. I forget what those items were. Um, and then I'll just wait until after you make payment on the claim and until after you get your money. And then I'll just file a supplement with the inside. And he goes, my man, you know what you're doing. I mean, like, that's, I mean, that's just to, to, to visualize, that's how it really goes, you know. Don't make their job hard on them if you don't have to. You don't need to make the adjuster the enemy. I mean, there's a lot of good, actually, adjusters. You just don't know what they're working under, like what they're, what's on their back, you know. Um, and they're probably tired of hearing about it from crazy contractors, too, guys. You know, think about what your competition looks like to these guys. You know what crap they have to put up with? You know, they're not all awesome like you, you know? So I mean, think of what they're putting up with. All right, revised Tower Hill estimate. So first thing you'll note, Tower Hill on an Xactimate estimate, which they never do, you know? So that, that's victory number one. And this is, ta this is his, but this guy was not cool, I started to tell you, because he was like, I can't send you the estimate. I, I got it done and I sent it in and I can't give it to you. I'm like, oh man, that's lame, you know? So he didn't want me to like hold him to it because it still has to be approved by Tower Hill. But they uh, sent my, the client, the, the retired attorney, a copy of the estimate. And, that's, and so that's the first time I got to see it. And I'm going through it, I'm looking at it. And let's just see. Uh, clean, with pressure clean, 
Now look at this. This is how the adjuster deals with the window problem, right? Rear or front elevation, uh, 17 windows and one door are damaged, guys. Prices to follow. Notice how he did change it. Somebody asked me, do they ever change it? Yeah, they change it. Look how he changed it. He took out the FBC 25% rule. Good, I don't need it because an adjuster saying, are damaged. <laughs> Prices to follow. See, this is coming from the adjuster, guys. This is not coming, you know what I mean? Like it did start with me, but this is now the prescription that I have to follow, guys. These windows and doors are approved now. They're approved. Just because they're zero, they're now approved, okay? Now, I'll, I'll, I'll follow it up. So they are damaged, must follow. So rear porch, rear elevation, all the same stuff you've kind of already seen, at least that you could catch. He gave me the 50 hours on the masonry. But you notice, he took out the masonry open item. That's something that he took out. He said, I'm not putting it in there. I'll give you the windows and doors thing, but I'm not doing the window. And I, you know, I told him, I said, okay, no problem. I'll just supplement it later. He said, well, that's what you have to do. Cause I'm like, <laughs> you know, so like, and that's what I did. I went back later with the masonry. I mean, uh, but he, he did take that part out and he kept the windows and doors in. So rear elevation, 37 windows and seven doors, um, zero. Okay. So 10 windows, right? Uh, four windows. This is the guy that took out the the one angle stop valve. <laughs> There's definitely three angle stop valves in the kitchen, but for some reason he took out one. So he, who knows what else he took out, honestly. Did you see all those rooms? I mean, I'm sure there's gotta be items in there that he took out that I didn't catch. Um, crawl space, main level. So we'll just go on down. You guys can already get the idea, I think. Just wanna get to his, his bottom line here. With, remember, because there's no prices in the windows and doors, guys. So he's at 405916 with no windows and doors. He does have the roof in there, and I don't have the roof in mine. So the payment does not go out with this estimate. Instead, the client gets a call from the insurance company that says, hey, we're just waiting to send payment because we, we need these, uh, the estimates for the windows and doors from your contractor. And he called me up and he said, hey, they want the windows and doors before they're going to make payment. I go, huh? I go, dude, you're a retired attorney. What are you talking about? You know, that's undisputed cash. That's what it's called. Like, so we don't, why do we have to deal with windows and doors when you already agree that you owe us this for all these items? So send the money. Okay, we'll get that to you later. We're living in it. I see the attorney is shaking his head. Is it undisputed cash? Is that what it is? Like, we agree that you owe us that amount. They've already acknowledged that all these items, they're going to withhold payment and they're staying somewhere else. No, 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 no. Send us the money. And when we have those windows and doors, that's what we'll do. We'll send them to you at that time. So they sent the money and like they held back depreciation or whatever. But then when we finally had the windows and doors and I did it up, like, like I was telling you, I sent it in the, the Anderson. Then I had some other random guy call me up and he was like sideways with me. He's like, I don't know who you think you are uh, sending in this whole thing for this big crazy estimate. You don't even have not one picture on there of any damage to anything. And I was like, oh, oh, which claim is this? Which project is this? You know, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, I'm not perfect. I've been around for a while, but man, I make mistakes. Let me, let me look, let me see. I'm sure maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, 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 let me see. Oh, still searching, still searching. One moment, one moment. Oh, oh, I see, I see the problem. You know, if you just go ahead and refer back to the most recent adjuster estimate, it says that those windows and doors are damaged and prices are to follow. And my job is to simply you know, perform all repairs that are prescribed by the claim. And so that's why I sent it in. I mean, every dime of that windows and doors estimate was approved, every single dime of it. Like it was done, over with. And I'm telling you, that could not have happened had we not have done it that way, you know, like, like where we lock them in on it to say that they're damaged, you know, like, and then the way that we priced it, we didn't price them crazy. I think we could have charged a lot more, but again, we did it real fair on the, on the pricing and stuff. So, um, but that's the way to do it. And then the only other thing that I have to say about this particular estimate is something that my man brought up over there, which is, did you see anything in this whole thing about DMO? Again, the DMO, that method slid right through. And every item in the adjuster's estimate that was written by him is done correctly. And I take great pride in that, guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> Any questions about any of this? Go for it, man. How long did that take from cradle to grave? 
Uh, not very long, man. I mean, it took the, the biggest time timing was in the inspections and the estimate, but I hate to almost tell you, you know, it's like literally like, you know, seven, 10, you know, 14 days. I hate to say that because it's such a big, well, not cradle to the grave, but getting him to get that next payment out, mm-hmm. I'd say is probably another two weeks for the, okay. for the windows and doors. But, but I don't want to say it. Cause like, then you think like, that I'm trying to say that it should be that easy. It shouldn't be. This is one of the good ones, you know. This is one of the good ones where it just happened really quickly, you know. It could have been some insurance companies that, that could have delayed out for three, four months, you know, on something like that. But, but I, 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 that was a good one. That was a good one. Any other questions? No questions? I have one question. Yeah, go for it. This is real complicated, and you, as you get into larger remediations, whatever, at what point do you refer... I don't never. never. That's just me though, right. because I don't think like I've been. I get hired by PAs to go out and do the inspection and do the estimate and to deal with not to deal with the insurance company, but do the inspection and the estimate. So I just I, I feel like if I hire a PA or if I have my client hire a PA, then again that's going to be drawn out, man. And one of the questions I would have asked if, if there's a lot of people in here doing PAs and stuff is how long typically does it take you that. Yeah, I mean, it depends on where you are. But I think, and this is just a, my best guess, just an, and it's not based on any statistics, right? Just best, based on doing all these you know, events and asking that question, I think probably six to eight months is the, the nationwide average that it takes to go into public adjusting stuff. If you're in Florida, a year, year and a half, you know, depends on kind of where you are. But that's just way too long for me, man. You know, like, now I do, I will say this. There are some things that no matter what I do, I can pull out every trick I've ever learned in 23 years and still end up with a failure. That's why I say this is not, this is not undefeated stuff here. This is, gets you high winning percentage, but I can still end up on a deal where it just I can't get it to move no matter what. And, I, and, and that's very rare. Like after I, I have to exhaust all options. Um, so I think if you are going to hire a PA or if you're going to send something to litigation even, um, you know, if you're, if you're going to uh, invoke appraisal, do that, then I, it's okay. But I just feel like you shouldn't do that until you have exhausted all the options that are available to you. But I do think that these people are necessary in our industry. You know what I mean? Because for that one case that no matter what, that client's going to get hosed and somebody's got to be able to be there to hold the insurance company accountable when, when all other options have been tried and exhausted, but I, I typically give people on that, that that we do. I do consulting for, and they're like, "Look, I know I've got to hire a, a, a PA on this one, or I've got to do it." And I'm like, "Okay, what have you done?" And then I can usually come up with like four more tactics they could try. I think too many people just want to hit that easy button and they don't want to do the work. I, I think that's the majority of the people that just send all their stuff out to a PA and send all their stuff. I just don't think they want to do the work. They don't want to do. It. I think they should hire somebody. And so, like maybe they don't want to do the work, but they should hire somebody internally that's willing to do the work, you know, instead of ta- like taking a, getting a third party involved because then you lose the control. And hey, here's another reason. You're the contractor. You, you get that now the PA gets on the deal and you want to call up Tower Hill to find out what's going on. Oh, no, that's gone. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to find out any other if it's an appraisal. It, typically, usually they're, they're going to freeze up on you. You know, they get, it's already delay, deny, defend. And if you invoke appraisal, for example, then I don't, I don't, you know, I couldn't even tell you. I'm, I'm going to pull something out here because I don't really know. But like, depending on the states, I think they have like so many days that they have to respond to, you know, your first move or whatever it is. And so if it's 28 days, I feel like they're going to take 27. You know what I mean? And then now you have a response. So it's back and forth. And I just feel like they're going to, they're going to draw it all the way out on you, you know? Um, so I don't know. There's no PAs in the room, so I can say the stuff. <laughs> They're going to see it. Any other questions? Yeah, go for it, brother. And I, and I, so I see you too, man. I'll get, I'll get you next. Okay, what was it, man? I'm sorry. I got an enemy already. Look at this. He's coming after me. No, go ahead. I was just trying to find out what's your strategy to crosswalk. Um, estimates when you don't have like ESL files. So you have an estimate, mm-hmm. you get one from the adjuster, you need to quickly 
crosswalk the two to look for variances and differences? What, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. Maybe I misunderstood it earlier. You, you said crosswalk? Yeah, so I send you an estimate as an adjuster, and you as a contractor have another estimate. Mm -hmm. You just want to check for variances, except the dollar value. You want to check to see where the differences are. What's your strategy to do that? I just look at it and review it. I mean, I don't need to be funny, but I mean, I don't, oh, I don't need any. Line, line items, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, you know, I think maybe you might be asking, can I put it into something? put both of them in there and, and it spits out and shows me the differences? Well, not necessarily, but I just want, how do you compare them? I just read it. I just read it. There's no, there's no, I mean, I don't have any kind of a shortcut to, to read it. You know what I mean? Like, I just think, I feel like you, I mean, that's a good question because what I used to do with the um, estimate writing service, if I had a new client coming in, I like to demonstrate to them how much difference it actually is. You know, like I, I like to, what I like to do is get like, them show me their original exactimate estimate that the adjuster wrote and I would go through the exercise sometimes of just rewriting it exactly the way that it is but maybe putting in the you know taking out the demo and changing some th things there or maybe changing the removal of the drywall from the R&R &R to the tear out wet drywall bag for display you know, some of those things and I'll just re recreate it without actually adding any items at all um, but but no I don't have a way of like there's no way for me to, like, like, for me, I have 23 years of experience. You know, I've been using Xactimate for like 17, 18 years. So for me, I've, I've, I reviewed thousands of these things with, my, with companies I've been associated with. So if I see an estimate come through, I just review it. I just go right from the top and review it, you know. And then once I've done an inspection and done my own estimate, then that kind of has a way of you knowing, you just being familiar with the job. But... But I, I think another thing I want to add some content. I don't know if this is what you're asking. When you do your supplement request to them, a lot of people think that I mean to only write the items that are missing. I don't. I don't mean that. You can see my estimate. I'm going to rewrite the estimate from start to finish. I'm just writing it all the way over. Most times I'm looking at the estimates from an adjuster standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I get the contractor's estimate, and now I have you know, five or ten different jobs I'm looking at. And I have 600 line items to look at. So, again, just trying to go through that many mm -hmm. sort of estimates can be challenging. So sure. Well, it is going to be challenging. You know why? Because, you know what, this job right here, you could have 20 adjusters go out there and write an estimate on that, and they're all going to be so far apart. They're going to be so, so, so different. Same with contractors. You can, you can call out 20 contractors a bid on that, and the bids are going to be just all over the place. So I wish there was an easy way to shortcut it, but some things just aren't shortcut, you know, in this business. Like, I, th I think, you know, I don't know, man, I'm real, I'm real put it in, put in the work, you know, like I, I put it in and put in the time. I know you do too, but um, uh, this guy right here. Uh, yeah, you bet. Josh. 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 Um, I like your hat, dude. Oh, thanks, man. That's better. Um, my new, daughter at <laughs> <laughs> new construction versus remodel pricing and exacts. Do you get any pushback on that? Have you had any pushback? Um, um, so are you using, are you trying to use the new construction pricing for well, insurance we're, jobs or we're getting a lot of pushback using remodel and larger mitigation where a demo might be to studs. They're wanting us to use new construction pricing on the putback. Especially really? Well, State Farm. State Farm. State Farm. <laughs> this is something else. Yeah, no, no. I, I always learn it's, new stuff myself. Yeah. I've not heard that it's not yet. Just State Farm, but it must. State it must Farm be a newer trend. Have you seen this for a while going on? A couple years. A couple years. Yeah. I have not seen that at all. I've not seen them require. Large I mean, it's, I can see where they're coming from in a way, right? But it's not new construction. Not, not in any way. It's just not. I would. I would push back on that, hundred percent. Like. Have you had any luck with pushing back None on that? State Farm. None whatsoever. I mean, it goes all the way up the chain, and yeah. How many jobs? Like quite a few. Every State Farm, large of all. Really? Yeah. I wonder if that's a, is it this area that you these, you having these jobs or other areas too? Well, I mean, we're based out of Delaware, so um, every State Farm job in Delaware, where demo is to studs, they want new construction pricing. Oh, so real. That's a significant yeah. difference. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I would say it is. But it, but it's not new construction. It's definitely not. Like, there's so many different variances that you could you could play on that. But that's, that's you've thrown a curveball to me, man. Like, I'm blown away by that, huh? 70 grand on the last job. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Depending on how, how extensive it is. It's all labor. Yeah, it's all labor. labor. Any other questions, guys? 
Okay, I'm letting you go 10 minutes early because I know there's traffic. Um, but before I do that, please thank you guys very, very much for your attention today. Like I tend to lose some people during the day, but today, man, everybody stuck around. And I freaking love you for that, man. I'm gonna go back here so I can shake your hands when you leave. But I want you guys to give yourselves a round of applause for sitting here all day on a Friday. Thank you guys a million. We'll follow up with some emails too, so you have contact info. And uh, but I want to say hello on the way up. You don't get to leave without shaking my hand, man. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Great you, job. man. Thanks for coming. Thank I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Have a good one, buddy. You too, man. Thank you very much, Thank guys. You, Thank you for spending your Friday Great with me. Thank, Thank you, brother. Thank you I hope you got good man. stuff. We'll be Thank talking. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys coming. I love your energy. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Question. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about it. So Got to go quick because they're coming fast. I'm not letting anybody go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you have an insurance adjuster that yeah. is asking you to hide a cost of certain Thank you, so they don't you have too, to pay man. you overhead and profit. What do you do about that? They don't have to do what now? If they don't want to pay you overhead and profit. Thank you, brother. Good job, man. Good job. Thanks. I would do it. Yeah. I would, yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Supervision hours, roofing hours, uh, labor hours. Stuff like that. Thank you, brother. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. I like that shirt, dude. Pleasure. Thanks. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, it man. Was a treat. I appreciate it, brother. So, uh, um, supervision hours, yeah. labor hours, anything else that they want. Ask them what they'd like to do. Or thank how you, brother. Like I appreciate it. it. Yeah, like say, say, how, how would you like me to build it in? Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate you. You, you bet, man. No problem. Good class. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, dude. All right. Thank you, brother. Thanks for your time, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you, brother. I appreciate it. You too, man. Thank you for coming, guys. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it, man. You guys hanging out with me on a Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Take it easy. Keep in touch, you guys. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Nice Thank you. you guys are a bunch of sharp fight practitioners, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. you are too. Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Exceeded expectations. Thank really? You. Thank yes. you, man. I appreciate you sharing Thank you. that. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, I traveled thank from Oklahoma. It was worth it. Did you? What part of Oklahoma? Oklahoma City. Okay. Yeah. Oklahoma You're right up the road from me. Oh, yeah. I appreciate right that out so much. Tomorrow, so. Thank yeah. you. I hope you got a, it was a, it was a worthwhile experience. It was. was it? It was. I've been Good. watching your videos and seeing awesome. for a while. And I feel like you can teach some of this stuff. I heard you know your stuff over I'm there. Learning. You're, I'm learning. You keep going, man. I'm learning. I got to get Keep bored. doing it. But I want to do the, uh, the mitigation classes. That was something I had no Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, brother. Just appreciate just you, man. The, like I, I C R C stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I think you should. I, th I really think. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. you coming, man. Hey, thank you for your energy, man. <laughs> I don't want to monopolize your time. Uh, no problem. No you, problem, Jeff. Thank you so much. All right. Keep in All touch, right. please, All okay? Right. And have safe travels back to Oklahoma thank City. You. Okay, yeah. see. All right. Hey, how you doing? Um, hey, I just have a question. Um, yeah, sure. Please, sure, like, uh, um, you know, like, uh, like a, a certain uh, people like this small thing, like, let's say, for water, do you think, like, other things, or something like that? Or do you have, like, a... Uh, do I have content to vice versa? Um, but, you know, I don't know that there's really an answer to that. I mean, because I've seen hail damage claims pay for everything, you know, uh, wind. But are you talking about where it's a roof, but they have it like an ice damming? Is that what you're talking about? Like where ice gets yeah, on the roof? I heard like one of my friends, I mean, one, yeah, one of my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we, Probably water damage might be best, as long as you can get the roof bought, you yeah. know. But probably water damage. But the ice dam is a cause too. That's actually a cause in its, in and of itself. But you know, driven rain. So if there's an opening somewhere in the roof that causes the water to get inside, then they have to cover the roof and all the water inside. But like a lot of times they'll say, oh yeah, the roof is damaged, but all that water damage that came that was a long time ago. That's not part of this, you know. But if it's about to make the claim for the customers, you say that we don't want yeah. to. Yeah, you I don't just, want to. You don't want to make the claim for them. Okay. You want them to do it, but you, it's, you, it's complicated because you can't really tell them to do it. Okay. It's weird. It's a stupid law. Uh, <laughs> it's, okay. it's, 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 it's a dumb law.